Hi friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Juan, I'm a yarn addict, hence the name Juan the Yarn Addict, and I want to thank each and every one of you guys for stopping by to check out my video today. This is a yarn and crochet channel where we talk about all things yarn and all things crochet, so if that interests you, please sit back and watch this video because today, my friends, I offer you a tutorial on my latest project, which is the Premier Puzzle Gameplay Throw. So, this blanket features all of my favorite colorways of Premier Puzzle. What are your favorites? There's 35 to choose from in total, and you can find these uh, skeins of Premier Puzzle in many places. They're literally everywhere. You can find them in the big box store Walmart. You can find them at premierYarns.com. You can also find these at Hirschner's, among many other places. Um, so let me show you my favorite colorways. So first we have Domino. Next we have Acrostic. Then we have Backgammon. Next we have Checkers. And then we have Hangman. Next we have Sudoku. And finally we have Maze, which is the green. So these are some of my favorites and I decided to use these to create this project for you guys. Um, and hopefully you guys can get inspired to select your favorite um, Premier Puzzle uh, skeins of yarn to create this project. So the thought behind it is grab your favorite games. Each skein uh, name is named after a game. So what are your favorite games? What are your favorite skeins of Premier Puzzle? Let's grab a skein of each and make a throw. So each skein produces seven squares using a six millimeter crochet hook. That's what I use for this tutorial. It's a six millimeter crochet hook. We do six rounds of a granny square. I show you step by step how to do that granny square to produce seven, um, seven squares. And then I show you the step by step process on how I join my squares. It's very easy and very quick and efficient. So once everything is joined, then I show you how to do the border, step by step from beginning to end. It worked up super fast. It's very easy and it's a lot of fun. This yarn is a bulky five and it is squishy and it is soft. Um, you hear nothing but good things about Premier Puzzle, so why not? This is a, a great way to feature uh, these yarns. It's literally among one of my favorite yarns. I've spoken about that on my channel since day one, probably. I can't remember, but I think day one. So um, without further ado, my friends, let's go ahead and jump into this tutorial. Feel free to rewind, slow me down, rewind me as many times as you need to to get through it. Again, it's literally step by step. It's easy and it's a lot of fun. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial. I'll see you on the other side. Okay, friends, so for this part of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how I work up a granny square. Now, there are many different ways to do this, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to show you how I work it up. Now, the yarn that I'm using is Premier Puzzle in the colorway Acrostic. I chose the lighter color just so it's easier to see all the stitches, okay? And I will be using a six millimeter crochet hook, okay? So to get started, what we need to do is create a slip knot on our hook. However you do this is absolutely fine so long as the end result is this, okay? From here, what we need to do is chain four. So we're going to do one, two, three, and four. Next, what we're gonna do is take the tip of our crochet hook and insert it into the very first chain we're going to draw up a loop and slip to close. And we're going to pull on the tension on the hook and our working yarn. And a circle will form here, just like that, okay? So from here, what we need to do is chain three. And this will count as a double crochet. So now we're going to work the first round. This is the first crochet 
for our very first uh, granny cluster. So we're going to do two more double crochets in our circle. One. And two. So that is one granny cluster right there. So now what I do is I chain two. And then I'm going to do um, three more granny clusters to finish the square here. But first, let's go ahead. We have the chain two. We're going to do three double crochets for our granny cluster. So that's one. That's two. And that's three. Now what we need to do is chain two. Three more double crochets. One, two, and three. We're going to chain two. And then we're going to put our final set of stitches into the circle here. Three double crochets. One, two, and three. Okay, so to close off round one, what I do is, is I chain two, And then I attach my chain to not the first one, but the second one. I go right into that middle stitch, I draw up a loop, and I slip to close. And that's what it looks like. So from here, what I do is, I go into the next stitch and I slip. And then I go into the corner, draw up the loop, and I slip. So now I bring myself over to the corner to start round two. Okay, let me back up a little bit. So for round two, I chain three, and that counts as a double crochet. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two more double crochets for that cluster. From here, I'm going to chain two, and then I'm going to do three more double crochets in this corner here. One, two, and three. Okay. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going right into the corner here, no chains. I'm going to yarn over, go right into the corner, and do my double crochet. And I'm going to do two more, like I did in the other corner. Okay, and as you can see, even without doing the chain, there's still a space here. You're minimizing the holes, okay? You can't really do anything about the corners, but yeah. So from here, we're going to chain two. Go back into the corner for three more double crochets. And we're going to repeat what we just did. We're going to jump right into the corner, yarn over, go into that corner, do a double crochet, and we're going to do two more. From here, we're going to chain two. And we're going to do three double crochets. One, two, and three. Finally, we're going to go into that last corner, yarn over and go right into the corner, no chains.
chain two, three more double crochets in the corner. One, two, and three. Okay, so to close off round two, friends, we're going to literally just go right into that second stitch, no chains. Drop a loop and slip to close. And we're going to slip over into the corner. So go into the next stitch, draw up your loop and slip. Go into the corner, drop a loop and slip. And that is two rounds. Okay. So, for round three, it's going to be identical to round two, but with this middle space here, we're going to go right into that space and do our granny cluster, but no chains at all except for the corners. So, I'm just going to go ahead and do all of the things here and just talk my way through this just for repetition to make sure you guys got it. So the three chains count as a double crochet. I'm gonna go ahead and do two more double crochets to finish that granny cluster. I'm gonna chain two. I'm gonna do three double crochets. I'm gonna go right into this, this space right here. It's not even a chain space. So I'm just going to go into that open space. And in that space, I'm going to do three double crochets. And now I'm going to go right into the corner, three double crochets. We're going to chain two. Three more double crochets in the corner here to finish off this corner. Now we're going to jump into this open space in the middle here. And we're going to do three double crochets. Next we're going to go and work the corner which is three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. If I'm going too fast, just hit the, gear, hit the gear button and slow me down. Now I'm going to go right into this middle space like I did here and like I did here. Yarn over, go into the space, three double crochets. And now I'm going to work this last corner here. Three double crochets. Chain two. Three double crochets. And finally, we're going to go into this open space in between our granny clusters and do three double crochets. One, two, and three. Okay, so that is three rounds here. Our square will consist of six rounds. Okay, so we're going to close this off no chains. We're literally just going to skip our first uh, chains here, which we're counting as double crochets, and we're going to go right into the middle. We're going to insert our hook into that middle stitch, draw up a loop, and slip to close, and then we're going to go into the next stitch, draw up a loop, slip to close, and then go into the corner, draw up a loop, slip to close. And so now we're in the corner and we're ready to start the fourth round. So I'm going to continue 
I'm going to do the next two rounds off camera and I will be right back. Feel free to rewind me um, to the prior rows to, you know, see how you go forward from here. But it's pretty self-explanatory. In the corners, you're chaining two and there's no chains along the sides. You literally just go in between the clusters. Okay. So um, with that, just continue on for two more rounds and I will meet you at the end of round six. Okay, friends, so here we are with six rounds uh, for the granny square, okay? And so I did all of the stitches here, and so all I need to do now is close off the round. So to do that, no chains, as I mentioned previously. We're going to go right into that middle stitch, drop a loop, and slip to close. And we're not going to go any further. We're just going to stay right there. We're going to chain two and then we're going to grab scissors, cut a tail, slide the hook away from your work, pinch and pull down. And that double knot will not allow anything to go anywhere. So you're good. Okay. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to sew in our end. So to do that, we need a darning needle and what we're going to do is we're going to fold this over the eye of the hook pinch and slide that yarn through just like that and then we're going to insert the needle I like to go down you can do it however you want I try to stay away from this going this way because I'm going to be using this to connect the squares So, yeah, pretty simple. Just a few passes, and then you can trim it off. Okay, friends, so once we have everything sewn in on the end, we're going to flip it over to reveal this. So all I do is a nice little tug, not too hard. And then I trim the tail right before the knot. Okay, so there's that. And so now what we need to do is figure out how we're going to lay out our pattern. So the biggest piece of advice that I can give you is, well, you can lay your squares however you'd like. <laughs> That's the biggest piece of advice I can give you with your squares. Um, one piece of advice I could also give you is, um, try not to put like squares together. So if you have a cross stick next to each other, try to space it out. Um, try to mix up your darks and your lights. Um, give it some variety. And once you have your squares, you know, mapped out however you want, you can kind of get an idea as to, you know, what it's going to look like. Okay. So my blanket, the one that I'm featuring in this video, is seven squares wide by uh, seven squares long. So it's a total of 49 squares and seven colorways of puzzle. Okay, so each skein provides seven squares, as I mentioned in the beginning. So once I have everything laid out, then we start to join the squares. So I'm, I'm going to show you how we're joining the squares, okay? So first we need to make sure that all of our squares are faced up, okay? And the easiest way to be able to tell is by looking at your perimeter here. So if you notice, the stitches kind of curl up, right? So as long as you're able to see the front and the back post in the upright position, you, this is the top. As opposed to it bowing down, you see how it bows down? We're now looking at the back. Okay, so that's one of the easiest ways to be able to tell. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little bit of an example on how I joined the squares using these four swatch squares as an example. Okay, and then we're going to move on to my actual product. 
my project, okay? So first what we need to do, we need to create a slip knot on our hook here. However you do this is fine, as long as the end result is this. Now I am using backgammon, the colorway backgammon to join my squares because it is the darkest um, colorway that I have, okay? Just, you know, for contrast. So first step is we're gonna take the first two squares and we're going to pinch in the middle so that the outsides are on the, I'm sorry, the face up is on the outside, okay? So now what we need to do is we need to go into the corner space right here and right here. We're going to insert our hook, bring our yarn around, draw up a loop. Let me try that again. <laughs> Slip knot on the hook, just like that. Go into the corner space, go into the corner space. Draw up a loop, yarn over and go through both, just like that. The next step we need to do is to go back into the corner space and do a single crochet, okay? So now, as you travel along the side here, you're literally just feeling for the spaces next to the granny uh, cluster stitches, okay? So now that we have two single crochets here, the next step is to chain two. Next, we need to go into the next chain space. We're gonna jump right over and do a single crochet. Chain two, go to the next chain space, or not chain space, the open space in between the, the clusters, single crochet, chain two, and hop over, single crochet, chain two, hop over, single crochet, chain two, we're flying through it friends, single crochet, chain two, and now we just feel around for the corner space, there we go, and there we go, just like that. Go into the corner there, and single crochet. And that is what we're looking like so far. So let me just make a bunny ear. I'm gonna open it up and show you. This is just a mini version, okay? Just a simple line that connects everything, okay? And it's not going anywhere, I promise. It is connected. So this is the fastest and easiest way, and it actually looks nice, to join the granny square and it not go anywhere. Um, and it lays flat, okay? So let's continue. Let's join another square, okay? So now that we have these two connected, let's go ahead and grab these two. We're going to pinch in the corners lay them down like this so that the outsides are sandwiched on the outside if that makes any sense so all the faced ups are now on the outsides okay so now what we need to do is like we did here with these squares just feel for the open space here the chain space in the corner match them up Bring your hook over and go into that space. Draw up a loop and make sure your tension is nice and tight. And then do a single crochet, just like that. Let me zoom in, just like that. So from here, we're gonna chain two. We're gonna feel around for the next open space Do a single crochet, chain two, feel for the next space, single crochet, chain two, and just continue doing that. OK. 
go into the last portion of that with a single crochet. Now let's just say this is the end of our blanket, right? So the beginnings and the ends of our blanket get two single crochets. So if this is the end, we're going to go in and do two, just like this. Okay, so we're going to cut off, well first, since this is the end, we're going to chain two, right? Two double crochets and chain two. This is the end of the blanket, okay? Let's cut off, pull the hook away from our work, pinch, and pull down. And that's the end there. So then we're going to take our tail and sew in the end. Just like this. And what I'm doing here is I'm going through the chains in the chain space because it's dark and you don't want to do anything with that. So I go back in just like that. And then I trim that off. And so that's what the one side looks like. So now we're going to turn this around and we're going to make sure that the spine, I call this the spine, make sure the spine is faced up. We're going to pinch and we're going to go this way. Okay. So to do that, we're going to do a slip knot on our hook. Just like that. I'm going to zoom in. And we're going to go to the corners here. So here's the corner. And here's the corner. So we're going to go in to the corner, draw up a loop, yarn over, go through both, and then go back in and do a single crochet because this is the beginning of our work, we have two single crochets, okay? So from here, we're gonna chain two, and we're gonna fill in for the next space, which is right there, you see the finger. Go in, do a single crochet, chain two, whoops. Go into the next space, single crochet, chain two, and then just work all the way across, just like this. It goes very quick, friends. It does the job, it looks good. Now here, here's the spine, right? So we're gonna go in to both of those spaces, just like that, okay? and no chains, we're gonna jump right over to the next one. Go right into the next one and do another single crochet. Chain two, and then continue on with our work. And if you can't manage to get into the spaces by feeling it, just do it one at a time. Go like that, and then go in like that. Chain two, go into the next space, single crochet, chain two, and then just continue on like this. And at last, we're here at the end of our work. So here, we're gonna go in, do a single crochet, and then go back in and do another single crochet. Chain two, since it's the end of our work, we're gonna go ahead and cut a tail, pull the hook away from our work, pinch and pull down, and we're gonna sew in that tail. Yarn over the eye of the needle, pinch and feed it through, 
and then go into the chain just like that let me pull away so you can kind of see what this is looking like okay so now this is a mini version of the project okay just a mini version so the next thing we need to do now that we have everything um, joined and it's a great join like you cannot see any you know it's it's not going anywhere friends look how nice and connected that is look and I am really pulling on it okay it's perfect okay so now what we're gonna do is we are going to take the backgammon and we're gonna go around the perimeter we're gonna make this all match okay um, before I do that though I'm gonna place you guys on a brief pause I'm gonna go ahead and sew in these ends here and I'll be right back okay so I just sewed in all the ends we are good here perfect okay so now what we're going to do is we are going to um, literally do this around the perimeter okay we're going to make it all match before we put a border on so um, to start what we're going to do is put a slip knot on our hook just like this okay and now we're going to go to any corner we can pick any corner we want. I'm going to choose this one right here. Let me zoom us in. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do um, a standing, like a, a single crochet join. So we're going to go into the corner, draw up a loop. There's two loops there. Yarn over and go through both loops. Okay. So from here, what we need to do is chain two. And then we're going to go into the next open space and chain one. And then chain two. Go in, single crochet. Chain two. Single crochet in the next space. Chain two. And we're going to continue that all the way around. Okay, let me back up a little bit. Didn't realize I was so close. <laughs> single crochet chain two we're going to continue over here single crochet and chain two okay so here we are at this point here so what we're going to do is we are going to do a single crochet in this in this side here and then a single crochet in this side here back to back just like that and then we're going to continue on. So chain two, and then a single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain two, single crochet. And then we're going to continue on here. We're almost at the corner, so I'm just going to keep you on. Single crochet, chain two. And if you need to slow me down, I mentioned this earlier, but if you need to slow me down, please hit the gear button, slow me down, okay? So here we are at the corner. So the corners will get a single crochet, chain two, and then a single crochet. That's for the corner, okay? Next, we're going to chain two, go into the next space there, single crochet and chain two, and then we're gonna continue working this, okay? So continue doing this around the perimeter, and I will be right back. Okay, friends, so I'm closing in on the end of round one here. So I have the single crochet and the chain two. So then I'm going to go into the corner, do a single crochet, chain two, and then I'm going to go into that very first stitch of the round. I'm going to draw up a loop and slip to close. And this is our anchor row. I know it's not going to make much sense right now, but we're actually going to work the border using 
these chain spaces, okay? So from here, we're going to chain two. We're going to cut a tail, pull the hook away from our work, and pull down to secure that, okay? I'm gonna place you on a brief pause and I'm gonna sew in these ends, okay? One second. Okay, friends, so this is where we're at. We have the spines going in all directions, okay? Just imagine this being your entire blanket, okay? The whole seven by seven or however many you're making, okay? So make sure that all of um, your squares are joined, right? Single crochet, chain two, single crochet, right? All the steps. And then for the, the border here, we're following the same principle where we're doing single crochet, chain two, single crochet. In the corners, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, right? But then to join um, the squares here, we're doing back-to-back -back singles, no chains, okay? Just doing a little recap here. So once you have everything together, the squares might be a little wonky, you know? It might not line up correctly. That's perfectly normal. So what you can do is just pull on the spines. It will lay flat, just like that. Okay, super nice. So the next thing we need to do, we need to work on the border. Unless you like the way this looks, you can leave it like this if you like. But I'm gonna show you how to do a border and you can do several rows this way and it'll come out looking excellent, you'll love it. Okay, so once you have the outside completed and your ends sewn in, what you want to do is you want to pick a corner to start, preferably not a corner that you just came out of. We just came out of this corner, so we're not going to start there. I'm going to choose, let's see, I'm going to choose the maze corner here. So to start, what we need to do, we need to create a slip knot on our hook. So however you do this is fine. This is how I do it. Okay, let me zoom us in a little bit. Come on, there we go. Okay, so to do the corner, what we need to do is we need to insert our hook into that chain two space in the corner right here in between those two singles. We're gonna go into that space, draw up a loop, yarn over, and go through both of those loops um, and it should look like this. So from here we're gonna chain two and this whole situation right here is considered a double crochet. So the next step we're gonna go back into the corner and do another double crochet and now we're gonna work the side. So this is just one half of our corner, okay? So we will finish this up when we come back again at the end. So the next thing we need to do here is no chains. We're gonna go right into the chain space here. So from here, we're going to yarn over and go into the chain space and do three double crochets. Just like that. No chains. We're just gonna go right into the next space and do three more double crochets. And we're gonna continue doing that all the way down the side of your project. However long it is, it's gonna look like this, okay? So continue doing this all the way down the side of your work. I'm gonna place you on a brief pause and I will meet you back here well, I will meet you here at the corner, okay? I'll be right back. Okay, friends, so I made it down the side here. And the one thing I wanna tell you is, when you cross over your squares, you're literally gonna jump from here to here. You're gonna skip over this, okay? Just like that. And so here we are at the corner. And so the corners, all the corners will always get the same thing. 
And so what they're going to get is two double crochets, just like that, and then two double, uh, two chains, and then two double crochets. And it should look like this. Okay. So the next, we're going to just continue down the side here. Three double crochets. Again, I know I keep saying it, but make sure you're not using any chains. And again, that's this is what the corner is looking like. It's nice and square. It's all the things. <laughs> it's so nice. Okay, so continue on with this, friends. I'm going to go around the entire perimeter of our project here, and I will meet you back at the beginning, okay? Okay, so I'm closing in on this round here, okay? So in the beginning, we had um, the two stitches already existing in the corner. So now what we need to do is go right into the corner and do two double crochets just like that and we're going to chain two Let me go ahead and turn this around and I'm going to skip over this whole situation right here and I'm going to go into that second one that second double crochet draw up a loop and slip to close and that'll be the corner okay so from here, I'm going to chain two. I'm going to cut off a tail and I'm going to pull my hook away from my work and pull down. Okay, and now I'm going to place you on a brief pause and I'm going to sew this in. I'll be right back. Okay, friends, so I sewed the end in and this is what we're looking like. Okay, Let's slide this down so you can see all the things. All right, so if you want to just do one round, I mean, by all means, go ahead. But if you want to do more, I'm going to show you. So literally, we're going to repeat this original um, round. So we're going to go into all the spaces here with the same colorway, backgammon, and we're going to do a chain, uh, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to start by doing a slip knot on our hook, as always. Just like that. I'm going to zoom you in. And let's go to a corner. Preferably one that you didn't just come out of. So this looks nice and fresh, so we're going to use this. So to start, what we're going to do is we're going to do a single crochet. So we're going to go in, we're going to drop a loop, yarn over, and go through two. So that's our starting point. So next we're going to chain two, and then we're going to go into this, ne this next open space right here. Single crochet. We're going to chain two, go into the next open space, single crochet, and this is what we're looking like, okay? Chain two, go into the next space, do a single crochet, chain two, and repeat. So we're going to continue doing this all the way around, and then when you get to the the corner here, remember, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain two, single crochet. Okay? So I'm going to do all this here, and I'm going to meet you in just one second when I get to this corner, because I want to show you what that looks like. Okay? I'll be right back. Okay, friends, so here we are. So I have a single crochet here. We're going to chain two. Then I'm going to go into this next space, single crochet, chain two, go into the corner, single crochet, 
chain two, back into that corner, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain two, and single crochet. So the pattern stays the same. Um, it's just that we're going around the corner. And so that's what that should look like. Very identical to what was already down here. You're just mimicking it. Okay, so continue doing this and I will see you back at the beginning of this round here, okay? Okay, friends, so I did this single crochet here. I'm back at the beginning here. So single crochet, chain two. I'm gonna go into the corner there with a single crochet. I'm gonna chain two. And then I'm gonna go into that very first stitch. And friends, if you can't make it in there for whatever reason, that's fine. Just go into the chain space next door here. And then slip to close. But then chain two. Cut a tail. Pull the hook away from your work. And then pinch and pull down. Okay. So the reason why I couldn't go into that is because I sewed in the end before coming back on. So that's why that couldn't happen. So let me go ahead and sew this end in and I'll be right back. Okay, friends. So I put the second round um, on here and this is what it's looking like it looks so nice my advice to you is is to just give it a nice tug every now and then it's not going to hurt it at all it's actually going to help you um, by keeping you know everything nice and flat okay the squares all of it just give it a nice tug okay so you can go as many rounds as you want with this border should you decide to you know stop i mean it's completely up to you you can finish your project with this kind of a border or you can finish your project with this where the acrostic is where my handle of my hook is so um if you notice um we have two double crochets here where the acrostic is. Well, in order to continue growing this out, should you decide to do more border rows, um, this changes. The corner actually will adjust and change as we continue to grow this out. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So I just came out of this corner. You can tell by this right here, I sewed everything in. So let's choose a corner that we didn't just come out of, which is right here. And so I'm gonna choose another colorway here. This is Hangman. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to create a slip knot on our hook, as always. Just like that. And then we're gonna go into the corner space here drop a loop, yarn over, and go through both loops, just like that, okay? We're going to chain two, like we did with the acrostic down here, and that will count as a double crochet. So in these immediate corner pieces, these corner pieces here will always get two double crochets, okay? So that counts as one, so we're gonna do another one. So that's two double crochets. And we will finish this corner once we come back around, okay? So now in this next space, if you look downstairs there, there was two. Well, now we're growing this out, so it needs to have three. So one, two, and three, okay? And so now it's going to be business as usual where we just jump right into the next space and do three double crochets, just like that. Okay. We're gonna hop over 
and do three more double crochets. I like to use my thumb and my middle finger. I just kind of move it around until my fingers touch. That way I know I'm not grabbing any yarn and when I go to insert my hook, I'm going right through the other side. Just a little tip and trick. So we're going to do this all the way around just like that. The corners are, as I explained, the corner pieces will always get two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. But the very next space where downstairs you see two, it's gonna now be three. Okay? So continue doing that and I will meet you in one second back here at the beginning, okay? Okay, friends, so I'm back at where we started. And so what we need to do is just do two double crochets in this very corner here. And then we're going to chain two. And then we're going to loop around here. Let me turn our work here. So instead of going into the chains, instead of going into these, we're going to jump right into this stitch right here with our hook. We're going to draw up a loop and slip to close. Chain two. And like before, we're going to grab the scissors and cut a tail. We're going to pull the hook away from our work. We're going to pinch and pull down. Okay, and like before, we're going to sew in our end. Just give me one second. I'll be right back. Okay, so I just sewed in the end here. We're all good. Let me back us up. Okay, so this is what we're looking like. And as I said before, you can continue on with this border for as many rounds as you'd like. Okay, you have the basic formula. The next step being pulling, um, in our case, the backgammon and repeating these two rows here. Um, but this is where we're going to end it here. So this is kind of what our mini blanket looks like here. Okay. And again, I mean, you will get some of this buckling here. That's normal. So all you would do is just, you know, pull it out. It's fine. Okay. This is the back. This is what the back looks like. I love these mini versions because it's like you can see the whole blanket in one shot. <laughs> it's hard to put the blanket on the tutorial table and move it around like this. So um, that wraps this up. So this is um, this is the tutorial for the gameplay blanket. So just to recap, we covered joining the squares in both directions, and then we covered going around the perimeter and then we covered the border um, feel free to rewind and replay as many times as you need okay so I'm going to leave that there I'm gonna bring us back into um, the other room for final thoughts okay so I'll see you on the other side okay friends we made it to the end we are at the end of the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and then turn those notifications on to stay updated with me and my channel. It's been a privilege showing you this project of mine. It's a labor of love. I enjoy it because I got to work with some of my favorite yarns. I've been talking about Premiere Puzzle. Uh, since I started my channel, I've enabled many people into this yarn. And I am very proud of that because I didn't steer you wrong. The, the, the yarns are very soft and squishy. It's a bulky five. Um, we worked this up, like I mentioned earlier, with the six millimeter crochet hook. And my final thoughts are very simple, my friends. I really enjoyed this. It worked up super fast. I love the effect that each square has. No two squares are alike. So it's not cookie cutter, you know? 
Every square is unique in its own way, which says a lot about who we are as people. We're all unique in our own separate way. And the fact that these uh, skeins of Premier Puzzle, you know, is named after a game and we all have different tastes and we enjoy different kinds of games and things, it's perfect. It's unique. No two blankets will ever be the same. The construction's the same, but no two blankets will look alike because of the way these yarns are worked up. And it makes it amazing. I absolutely enjoyed making this blanket. I enjoyed showing you how to put everything together. And yeah, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, sound off below. I read the comments. I'm very active in the comments below. And so I can't wait to see your finished projects. I can't wait to you know, hear your concerns, answer your questions, and just have all the fun. So that is it for me for this project here. So until the next time, take care, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.